we would need. In this moment, we are starting this new session. Um, we are on the session number four of this uh, week number two. Uh, we are completing the second week, so we are going to have two more weeks. So in this case, we are in the middle of the course. Um, the next week, we are going to complete the week number three, and then we are going to complete the week number four. So in this case, we have a very short time to end these sessions and to complete all the modules for this period of time. Um, Yesterday, we were talking about quantifiers and we were talking about the, uh, the use of many and much, but I'm going to talk about different quantifiers that we can use in English. In this case, we're going like to um, have uh, more information in this case of the other quantifiers that we can use. And I have some example of that uh, of those quantifiers because we are going to see like uh, some difference and in which case we are going to use them and all of that information. Then I'm going to show you an a a couple of exercises in which you are going to uh, apply all the information or the knowledge that you have about the. Uh, the quantifiers, and then we are going to talk about a little bit about the the exam. That is the last thing that we are going to do today, because you know that you need to, to complete that information for this um, session. So in this case, we are going to see something about some, any, um, a lot, a few, and a little. In this case, we are not going to talk about, again, much and many, because we already talked about that information. So in this case, we are going to pay attention to the other quantifiers that we have in English. Um, in this case, it's like very simple information, but we are going to have like a couple of details about the quantifiers. And then we are going to have like a, an exercise that is, um, related to this, this information. In this case, it's like to, um, to express what is the uh, correct form of the quantifier that we need to use depending on the context and also depending on the, uh, the noun in this case, if the noun is um, countable or if the noun is uncountable. So in that case, you're going to use different quantifiers. And also we are going to see something about the use of negative or positive ideas. In this case, it's not like the use of the positive and negative statement. In this case, it's related to the positive and negative ideas that we can uh, give or the details that we can give with these sentences. Vamos a ver cuáles de estos eh, quantifiers lo vamos a utilizar en situaciones negativas, ya que no vamos a hablar del uso de las palabras negativas como el, el not o el uso de auxiliares negativos como el didn't, el don't, el want, nada de eso, sino es como la idea que estas palabras tratan de mostrar. Y luego vamos a tener un ejercicio, bueno, en este caso son dos, in which we are going to choose the right option. And in this case, you are going to have much or many, too much, too many, and enough. Then we are going to 
like right what is the quantifier that we think is the correct option in the um, in the exercise in that case you are going to choose between the different um the different like quantifiers that we have so in this case you are going to analyze the context of the sentence and also the context of the words that we are using Así que después de hablar un poco de los quantifiers, vamos a hacer un ejercicio donde vamos a eh, decidir, ¿verdad? Vamos a leer, vamos a analizar el contexto de la oración que tenemos por ahí y eh, vamos a decidir cuáles son los quantifiers que mejor le van a esa oración. So, we are going to begin with the use of uh, some and any. That is the first thing that we are going to talk about right now. And we are going to see some examples and some details about the use of these words. Vamos a empezar con eh, los quantifiers some y any. Vamos a ver para qué situaciones se utilizan. Y eh, algunos ejemplos, algunas situaciones y información extra. So in this case, I'm going to share this uh, document. And then we are going to like have the different details. So in this case, we're going to talk about some and any. Like this. So in this case, some and any are used before uh, plural nouns and uncountable nouns to talk about an indefinite quantity. En este caso, vamos a utilizar el some y el any cuando tenemos un nombre plural, o sea, cuando tenemos nombres plurales, vamos a utilizar el SOM y el ENI, y también cuando tenemos nombres no contables. Y esto habla de una cantidad indefinida, ¿no? Estamos seguros de cuánto es la cantidad. En ese caso, vamos a utilizar SOM and ENI. So in this case, we are going to have two different examples. Right, give me a moment, I'm going to... So in this case, we have the, the following examples. We have some letters some money or we can use any letters and also any money In this case, we are not specifying how much of these things we have. Uh, we don't have like um, a quantity word that uh, tell me um, if I have 10, 12, uh, 100, 1,000, just one uh, letter, or if I have a big uh, amount of money, or if I have like a small amount of money. En este caso solo nos dice, ¿verdad? Que hay algunas, algunas cartas, algún dinero, pero no nos especifica cuánto, no nos da una cantidad específica. Entonces, en este caso, como yo no sé cuántas cartas tengo y cuánto dinero tengo, no, no voy a utilizar los otros, como en el caso de much or many, o en el caso de ponerle una quantity word, porque no tengo la cantidad específica. And in this case, it said that some is used in affirmative sentences. Some lo vamos a utilizar para oraciones afirmativas.
and we have some examples. There are some letters for you. I've got some money. En este caso no nos está diciendo, ¿verdad? Eh, la cantidad, sino que nos dice hay algunas cartas para ti. O obtuve un poco de dinero, o obtuve algo de dinero. Pero no sabemos cuánto. Y no es una situación negativa, es una situación positiva porque no estamos utilizando negative words in these examples. Also, we are going to use some in questions when we want to encourage people to say yes. For example, in a request and offers. In this case, we are going to use some when we want a positive answer to the things that we are saying. So you are going to ask something and you need that the people that you are asking tell you yes to your question. So in that case, we are going to use some to encourage people to say yes to the end to the question that we are making. Vamos a utilizar también some para um, alentar a las personas a decirnos que sí a la pregunta que estamos haciendo. En este caso se va a aplicar a lo que son las, um, las peticiones y los ofrecimientos. Entonces, si nosotros queremos que la persona nos diga que sí a lo que estamos pidiendo o a lo que estamos eh, ofreciendo, vamos a utilizar some en nuestra pregunta, que es como que le va a dar a entender a la persona que nosotros queremos una respuesta positiva. So in this case, we have, I need to clarify this one. Okay. So in this case, we have some examples. Can you let me have some paper? Can you? Let me have some paper. Would you like some more tea? Have you got some paper I could have, please? So in this case, if you can uh, notice that we are like using uh, some in these questions because we need that people say yes to the request or to the offer that we are making in that moment. And in this case, you can see that um, it's like you are going to use uh, this technique or, the, or this part of the question when you are working on maybe a restaurant or you are like making um, a call and you are offering a product, or even when you are in your job and you need something, so you need to use this kind of um, a structure of these questions to have a positive uh, answer. And in this case, you can see that they are kind of 
uh, formal questions, uh, very polite questions. So you are making like a plus uh, with the use of some, with some uh, words that are for very formal and polite uh, requests. No es como que simplemente vamos a preguntar o pedir alguna de las cosas, sino que también lo vamos a hacer de una manera bastante respetuosa, bastante amable, para que la otra persona, pues, nos diga que sí podemos hacer algo o si le estamos ofreciendo algo, que sí lo va a tomar. E incluso eh, puede hacerse, digamos, en las llamadas, que a veces uh, podemos estar ofreciendo algún producto y tal vez a la persona, de la forma en la que nosotros le hablamos, le vaya a parecer atractiva o le vaya a parecer convincente. So that's why we use this kind of a structure when we are like making some offerings or something like that. Then we have the use of any. In this case, we are going to use any eh, in negative and in question form. Ya teníamos que el some lo vamos a utilizar en positivos. El any lo vamos a utilizar en negativos y también en preguntas. So, in this case, we have the examples. And it says, are there any new stories in your store? Are there any new stories? In your store? Is there any D in the cupboard? I don't have any new stories for you. There isn't any tea in the cupboard. So in this case, like if you can notice what is the, uh, the structure that we are using in this case, we are using like the, the, the structure of there is and there are. Um, and we are like, we're not talking about a very specific structure in this case, uh, because we don't have like um, a very specific structure for these kind of words. In this case, you can use it in different uh, tenses, like you are uh, looking in these um, examples. Um, we can say that they are like very simple uh, statements. And in this case, we're using uh, the verb to be in the first uh, questions, we are using this kind of questions with the verb to be at the beginning. And when we are talking about a negative a statements, we're using negative words. In this case, in the first one, we have, I don't, I don't have any new stories for you. And in the other one is the use of there is and there are, there isn't any tea in the cupboard. Aquí estamos utilizando bastante lo que es el there is y el there are que también es parte de los temas que hemos estado viendo esta semana. Así que con esa estructura del there is, there are, y también con el uso de las preguntas con verbo to be, podemos utilizar estas, estos elementos, ¿verdad? Estas frases, estas palabras, que son quantifiers, porque nos hablan de las cantidades, y que las podemos ir utilizando con nombres contables y no contables. Desde el momento que empezamos las sesiones de esta semana, hemos llevado... Eh, los temas, ¿verdad?, que van en relación. There is, there are, countable, non-countable, and quantifiers. Todos tienen que ver con la misma eh, idea, ¿verdad?, de las cantidades. Now, we have another thing with any. It says that any is used after words with negative meaning, such as without, never, seldom, rarely, and hardly. En este caso, como estamos hablando de negativos, vamos a utilizar los 
adverbs, como es without, never, seldom, rarely, and hardly to use the word any. And we have some examples. In this case, we have, I found a taxi without any trouble. Now, you can see that this um, statement is not negative at all. Um, we don't have negative words. We don't have a negative connotation of the sentence because you are talking that you found something very easily. But we are just talking about the words. When we were like talking about the adverse of frequency, um, we talk about that part. We, we have like a table in which we have the percentage of the words when we are performing an action. And the words that are in the uh, in the middle and below are negative words. And that's why we have like without, never, seldom, rarely, and wholly as negative words or with a negative connotation because of the uh, percentage that they have. En este caso, nuestra oración no es negativa en realidad, sino que nuestra palabra es una palabra que se considera mmm, con un significado negativo o con un porcentaje negativo, porque cuando las clasificamos en la tabla de adverbios, que los adverbios ustedes saben que tiene un porcentaje, el porcentaje empieza de 100 y termina en 0. Si nuestro porcentaje está del 100 al 50, o del 50 al 100, como ustedes lo quieran ver, es una eh, connotación positiva, porque estamos hablando de la frecuencia en la que realizamos una acción, o se realiza una acción, o alguna de estas cuestiones. Entonces, si está del 50 al 100, son eh, connotaciones positivas, aunque lo usemos en una oración que tenga pues un significado negativo. Si está del 50 al 0, o del 0 al 50, son palabras con connotaciones negativas, por lo mismo, por la frecuencia en la que se realizan las acciones. Como lleva menos tiempo, al decir casi nunca, que es de los más bajos, o nunca, como es el never, son connotaciones negativas, aunque mi oración tenga una, uh, un significado positivo, pero como se refiere a la palabra en sí. Entonces aquí se aplica lo mismo. I found a taxi without, without, sin, sin, en ese caso, pues es una palabra con una eh, connotación negativa. Encontré un taxi sin ningún problema. Entonces, la oración en sí es positiva porque no estuvimos luchando para encontrar un taxi. Pero without tiene una connotación negativa por su significado también. Then, we have another one that is, uh, this one is a negative word, I mean, a negative connotation. In the word, and also the meaning of the sentence is negative. It's something negative because you are not doing something. And in this case, it says, you never do any homework. So in this case, you are expressing that you are not doing anything. And it is supposed that you do your homework. But in this case, you never do your homework. So in this case, you are going to uh, have a bad grades in this case. So that is a negative connotation of the whole sentence. Now we have another one. 
that is a uh, word with a negative connotation, but also the situation is kind of negative because you are going to uh, need to buy something very, um, in a couple of days, we can say, because you are going to uh, spend these uh, things in your house. So there are hardly any eggs left. So in this case, if you're going to need to buy eggs because you're not going to have anything in your house related to this product. So this is like uh, the use of negative words uh, or words with negative connotation and also a situation in which you're going to find kind of trouble because you need this uh, element in your kitchen because you need to use eggs to um cook something and or in some cases you are like a person that like eggs in the food or in the things that you are eating and in this case i'm just going to we were talking about much and many but i'm going to write something related to much and many because um we have something related to the use of much and many, but with another words. And in this case, we have like, um, that we use much and many in affirmative sentence after some words. And we are going to see what are those words. And also we are going to see that in affirmative sentences, we normally use a lot, lot and plenty and not much and many, but just like, a, uh, extra information related to many and much just like that because we were talking about much and many and we have a lot of information related to that uh, part of the quantifiers So in this case, we are saying that we need or we are going to use a many and much in oraciones eh, afirmativas cuando tengamos to, as, so, am, very. En este caso lo vamos a utilizar eh, after those words, much and many. And it is not related to the countable and non-countable nouns. In this case, it's just the use of these words. And in this case, we are going to see some examples. We have take as much milk as you want. Take as much milk as you want. Cuando utilicemos as, es normal, ¿verdad? Que lo hagamos dos veces en la oración. Así como aparece acá, as and as, take as much milk as you want. Siempre van acompañados. Toma tanta leche como quieras. O sea, el significado no es que le vayamos a poner um, algo extra, sino que trabajan en conjunto. Eh, I've got so many jobs to do today. In this case, we can think that we have a lot of uh, jobs to complete. I got so many jobs to do today. Es como decir, tengo varios trabajos, ¿verdad? O tantos trabajos que hacer ahora. Es básicamente para uh, especificar que tenemos muchas cosas que hacer. We enjoy the party very much. We enjoy the party very much. Aquí estamos especificando cuánto de mucho podemos decir. 
eh, disfrutamos de la fiesta mucho. Ahí es como para no simplemente decir uh, una cantidad mínima, sino que bastante, ¿verdad? Very much. Pero que okay, igual se traduce como mucho, pero una cantidad alta. We have got too much milk. We have got too much milk. In this case, it's related that we have a lot of. Tenemos, uh, lo podemos eh, traducir como obtuvimos mucha o demasiada leche. Too much es demasiado. Eh, cuando es una cantidad bastante grande. Then we have that in affirmative sentence, we normally use a lot of. In this case, we can use like the two forms. Tenemos como dos formas de estas palabras. Podemos utilizar a lot o a lot of. También podemos utilizar lots o lots of. Plenty o plenty of. En este caso, pues, dependiendo, ¿verdad? De la, de la expresión que estemos utilizando. O vamos a utilizar el of o simplemente vamos a utilizar la palabra. Así que lo vamos a poner entre paréntesis para que sea un poco más entendible. So in this case, we're going to use a lot, lots, plenty, with both uncountable nouns and plural nouns. And in this case, we have a couple of examples. And it says, we got a lot of milk. We've got a lot of milk. It's got a lot of plenty of books. En este caso podemos utilizar ambos. Cualquiera de los dos estaría bien. It's got, got a lot of or plenty of books. And the last one, uh, in this case, it's like we are not going to use normally uh, he's gonna or he's got many books it's not like we are going to use so in this case it's not like you are not going to see something like this it's like we are not going to do it very like normally puede que veamos algunas frases parecidos pero no es como eh, muy común verdad utilizar frases como estas he's got many books Pero puede que lleguemos a verlos en algún lado. Then, we have the use of a little and a few. We use a little to express positive idea with uncountable Now,
So in this case, we're going to use a little to express positive ideas with uncountable nouns. Eso sí va para nombres no contables. Son ideas positivas y significa una cantidad pequeña, pero que aún así hay algo de esa cantidad. O sea, no estamos en cero, pero tampoco es una cantidad grande. Puede ser un poco, ¿verdad?, de esa cantidad. Pero se habla de nombres no contables en este caso. So, in this case, we have the examples. And we have, there is still a little work to do. There is still a little work to do. So in these cases, when you have completed a, almost all the work that you have, and in this case, um, you have like a couple of activities that you need to perform, but it is not too, too much. So in this case, you can, um, complete these activities in a couple of minutes, in an hour or something like that, but it is not like zero, so you need to do some work uh, also, but it is not like a big deal. Then I have a little sugar in the yard. So in this case, um, you have almost anything on the yard, but you have like a couple of things here. So in this case, I have a little sugar in the jar. Así que se ocupa eh, a little cuando vamos a hablar de que tenemos cierta cantidad mínima, pero que aún así, por muy mínima que sea, existe. Así como en la de todavía hay un poco de trabajo que hacer. No es que ya terminamos, sino que nos queda algo, ¿verdad? Alguna actividad eh, que nos falta completar, pero no es como que nos vayamos a tardar toda la vida en ello. Eh, igual que lo del azúcar, donde tenemos un poco de azúcar, ¿verdad? No es una cantidad enorme, pero sí todavía hay algo de azúcar. Then, we have the use of a few, la, la, el conjunto a few. And in this case, is to express positive idea with plural nouns. El primero era uncountable nouns. This one is with plural nouns. And it means a small number, but some. El primero una cantidad mínima, o sea, cantidad. Y este es como un número. Ya estamos hablando de nombres plurales, pero puede llegar a, a verse como nombres contables, ya que estamos hablando de un número. En cambio, el otro es nombres no contables. Estamos hablando de cantidades, así como lo llamábamos, de masas, ¿verdad? Eh, como el trabajo, como el, eh, algunos elementos naturales o algunas sustancias. Y en este caso también la comida, como es el azúcar. Pero este ya es con nombres eh, contables. Give me a moment. we have here the example. 
a few students pass it because the exam is extremely difficult. A few students pass it because the exam is extremely Difficult. There are a few people come today. So in this case, we're talking about people. So in this, um, in this part, we are talking about something countable. So we have the a few students pass it because the exam. It's extremely, extremely difficult because um, it's talking about a, a small number. So in this case, it's a small number of students that pass the exam. And in the other one, there were a few people that came today. And we have a small number of people that came to that place. Um, but at the end is a, a small number, but we have these people on that part. And the last part of this is the use of little and few. Aquí ya no vamos a utilizar a little, a few. Aquí solo es el uso de little, la palabra little, y la palabra few, sin el artículo. Okay, in this case, um, these expressions without the article are more negative ideas. In this case, it's related to negative ideas. Little means not much or almost no, and few means not many or almost no. In this case, we have the same thing. Eh, tenemos, eh, compartimos el almost no, pero si nos fijamos, es diferente en el uso de la palabra. Porque en el primero tenemos not much y el otro not many. Eso nos hace eh, entender que uno es para nombres contables y el otro es para nombres no contables. El significado puede ser lo mismo, pero el uso va a depender de la palabra much o many en ese caso. There is little work to do.
So in this case, we have the two examples. There is little work to do and the exam is extremely difficult and few students pass it. So in this case, we have the explanation. In this one, there is little work. We are going to mark this one in yellow because we are going to see this one. That is the meaning of that word. In this case, not much. That is related to uncountable nouns. In this one, few, we are going to mark in red. And we have here, not many. That is related to two countable nouns. Ahí los tenemos, ¿verdad? En la primera o en el primer caso tenemos there is a little work to do. Y estamos utilizando el significado not much. No mucho trabajo que hacer. Pero se refiere a nombres no contables, ya que el trabajo es una masa. Y entra en la categoría de nombres no contables. And in the other one, we have few with the meaning not many. No muchos estudiantes lo pasaron. Not many, que se refiere al uso de los nombres contables, ya que estamos hablando de personas. So, in this case, we have the use of these uh, words or these quantifiers. Ahí tenemos, ¿verdad?, las especificaciones de eh, las palabras o de las frases o los conjuntos eh, de palabras, ¿verdad? Que vamos a utilizar como quantifier. In, in this case, you are like um, seeing the difference between these, uh, these words or the use of these words. And let me see, I'm going to put the, um, the exercise, but, um, okay. I think this is a better idea. I'm going to change the activity for another one. And in this case, it's a written um, exercise. Vamos a hacer un ejercicio escrito donde ustedes van a poner en práctica la información que adquirimos con, esta, con este, estos temas de esta semana. And in this case, I'm going to put an image in which you are going to write 10 sentences. But I think that I'm going to create another document in which you are going to find the image. And then you can also write the sentences there. Voy a crear un nuevo documento. Y les voy a mandar el enlace. Me van a dar un momento. Voy a detener esto. Voy a crear un enlace para este documento. Y se lo voy a mandar en este momento al grupo para que vean la imagen. Y ahí mismo les da la indicación de cómo van a escribir sus, eh, sus oraciones. En este caso es una imagen de un refrigerador y dice que tenemos que utilizar el there is, there are, some, a, and, a lot of, y vamos a describir 10 elementos que hay en el refrigerador. También ustedes pueden escribir qué es lo que no hay utilizando el there is, el I mean there isn't, and there aren't. Así que voy a hacerlo en un nuevo documento para que ustedes vayan escribiendo ahí. Y en un par de minutos lo vamos a revisar ese nuevo documento. I'm going to put the image with the specification and then you're going to write. In this case, it is not like, um, no van a, a, a crear espacio. Ustedes van a escribir de una sola vez sus, uh, sus oraciones debajo de la imagen. Y ahí van a aparecer y luego la vamos a revisar. Va a ser como un tipo de trabajo colaborativo. Ahí van a aparecer sus nombres, ¿verdad? En el documento. Así que no se preocupen por las participaciones. Ahí quedan anotadas sus participaciones. So I have the document here. And I'm going to share with you this document. Uh,
So I'm going to share this one. And I'm going to tell that you are like editors to write your statement here. But it's Georgie, just give me a second. Okay. Editor. Very good. Okay. If you cannot access to the document, you can tell me and I'm going to fix the, the thing here. Okay, let's see. I'm going to put on the dot in on the group. This one. This one. Okay. You have the link on the group. Ya tienen el enlace en el grupo para que puedan accesar. I'm going to share the screen in which we are going to see the image. Here it is. So this is the image that you have on the document. Ahí está la imagen y ustedes tienen esa, ese refrigerador. Ahí pueden ver diferentes elementos. Ustedes lo que van a hacer es escribir debajo de la imagen. Ustedes pueden ir poniendo number one y poner there is, uh, let's see, mm, some milk. There is some milk. Y ya tienen su frase número uno. Number two. Um, we have some eggs. For example. We have some eggs. Y si hay algo que ustedes no ven en el, refriger en el refrigerador, pueden poner there isn't y ahí van creando. Voy a dejar el documento ahí por un par de minutos. Ustedes pueden ir agregando sus oraciones. Como les decía, su nombre ya aparece ahí para ver los, eh, los, las frases que van escribiendo y las vamos a ir viendo en la pantalla. So, we are going to have five, sí, como cinco o seis minutos para que ustedes puedan crear sus oraciones en el documento. So, let's write the... Eh, the Statements with there is, there, there are, there isn't, there aren't, and also some, uh, and a lot of. So let's go. For the ones that have problems with the document, it's not like you need to download an app. En ese caso no es que van a descargarla. Es solo le dan usar la aplicación y se supone, bueno, según el tipo de, de sistema que tengan en sus teléfonos, lo va a, 
a redirigir directamente al uso de Google Talk. Porque se supone que la mayoría de teléfonos ya trae la, el paquete de estos documentos. O sea, ustedes ya lo pueden, lo pueden utilizar. Me, sorry, I can't see the picture. I don't know why, yes. but who, someone raised it? Yes, someone deleted the, the image. I was looking that too. I'm going to put again. I think it's going to appear complete. So, oh, oh my God. No. Give me a second. I'm going to put again at the image. Give me a moment. So. We have the image again here in the document. Okay, it's time, but we are going to read the statements that we have there. Don't worry, you can keep writing. Ustedes pueden seguir escribiendo y ahí aparece el, la participación de cada uno de ustedes. So, tenemos hasta el momento 18 oraciones. There is some milk. We have some eggs. There is not ketchup. There are a lot of potatoes. 
There is a lettuce. There are many oranges. In this case, in number seven, um, I think there is or there are, but we don't know what. There is no water. There are a lot of lemons. There isn't mayonnaise. There are some soda. There are some boxes of bacon. Um, there is some ice cream. There is a little ketchup. There is a lot of meat. There is still a little honey in the bottle. Oh, very good. Um, this one. Um, like this. And there are some eggs. Very good. Excellent. So you're going to have this um, image. Ah, there are there is some imagination. You're going to have this document on the group and you can keep writing if you want. And then we are going to check on the statement. I'm going to do something. Um, tomorrow I want, I, I'm going to check again the document and I'm going to uh, mark the mistakes or something that we have on the statement. Mañana voy a volver a revisar el documento. Ustedes pueden seguir escribiendo sus oraciones y vamos a marcar algún error o algo por el estilo que hayamos cometido en nuestras oraciones. Como el uso de minúsculas, los puntos, si no lo escribimos eh, completo o algo por el estilo. Y nos sirve también como un ejercicio para saber eh, cómo estamos escribiendo nuestras oraciones. Así que. Eh, vamos a terminar acá. Thank you for your time this week and we are going to see on Thursday. Nos vamos a ver hasta el día martes. El lunes no tenemos sesión ya que es día del trabajo. Nos veremos hasta el día martes. Tengan un feliz fin de semana largo. So we are going to see uh, each other on the next week. So have a really good night and see you. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Teacher, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.